One of these is the usual Flux Dev, and the other is the new Flux Crea. Can you tell which is which? Which do you prefer? Flux Crea is a new model release from Black Forest Labs in collaboration with Crea AI. It's supposed to produce more realistic shots and remove the telltale signs of Flux Face and AI skin. I think even only seeing a few images, it's obvious which one is which. Let's go through the simple setup and take a look at some of the images it produces to see if it can replace Flux Dev. Let's get into it. Okay, let's get all the models that we need for Flux Crea first. This is a pretty simple workflow that's based off of Flux Dev. So most likely you'll already have the files for the text encoders and VAE. The only real new one is the Flux Crea model. Since I'm using eight gigs and the standard model's too big, I'll be using the GF again. For me, just like with Flux Dev, Q6 fits perfectly fine within eight gigs of VRAM. So that's the one I've downloaded. Depending on how much VRAM you have, you can either go down or you can go up to Q8 if you have 12 gigs of VRAM. Then next are the text encoders, which you probably already have. So if you don't have it, you want you want the T5XXL FP8 scaled version. And then secondly, you want the Clip L also. So these two files, put them in the text encoders. And then lastly, the VAE, which is just this one file. And you put that in the VAE folder. Okay, now that we have the files, we can look over the workflow. This workflow is almost as simple as it can get. There's not that many nodes, so it's pretty easy to explain. So starting from the beginning, Instead of the load diffusion model, again, I'm using the GGUF. So I have a GGUF loader here and just choose the Crea model that you've downloaded. And then we have the dual clip loader. One of them is the text encoder and then the other is the clip. So put both of them in here. Make sure you're on flux and then device CPU or just leave as default. And lastly, the load VAE, which is the VAE that you downloaded as well. It's so pretty simple. And then now let's see how they're all connected. So the clip goes into two different clips, usually the positive prompt and negative prompt, but because Flux doesn't use a negative, there's a negative here just to include into the K sampler, but it's, it's grayed out and there's nothing inside it. So really you only have a positive prompt. And from here, this is where you put your prompt as normal. And the positive prompt gets fed into the Flux guidance. So from conditioning to the Flux guidance, and then from the Flux guidance into the positive sampler. The negative doesn't do anything. It goes into the negative sampler. And then the model goes from the model straight to the model on the K sampler. And then lastly, down here, we have the resolution for the output image. So the empty latent image, you set your resolution and that latent gets fed into the K sampler as well. So there's just four connections really into the K sampler and that's it. Then for the K sampler portion, you have the seed and the control for the seed. So randomize, then you have steps. So the default here is 20, just like with flux dev. The CFG you leave at one. Sampler you can use Euler, Scheduler Simple. These are all the defaults from the workflow from Comfy. And then Denoise at one. For Flux you can experiment a little bit with the Sampler and Scheduler. So you can switch these around and see what kind of different outputs you get. And then lastly, the K Sampler output goes into the VAE decode. Your VAE goes into the VAE model here. And then that gets output into a save image. And then that's what you get. So pretty simple workflow. A couple of notes on the speed. So depending on the resolution that you use, I generally use 1620 by 1080 for a landscape shot. Uh, you can also use 1920 by 1080 if you just want to use a 16 by 9. Or flip it around obviously for 1080 by 1920 or 1080 by 1620 for uh, just a, a slightly wider portrait shot, which I prefer. So generating on these resolutions with my CPU has no problem fitting within the 8 gigs of VRAM. I've never come close to hitting the, the max. And the speed I'm getting here for 20 steps is about six to seven seconds per iteration. So it's not super fast, uh, which is why some people use the Turbo Alpha LoRa before for Flux. I did try that with this model. It doesn't look quite as nice. So for, for the video, I'm generating full 20 steps, but you can use it to do quicker generations with eight steps if you just add the LoRa in. So with the image that's here, we can talk generally just the first impressions that I've had when I use uh, Flux Crea. It's a very specific look. And it does fix some of the AI type faces that people have come to expect from Flux. So it's definitely, the faces are definitely different. There's also a lot more skin texture that I've noticed in the Korea model. And the big thing is it's a lot more like an analog photograph. I think they copied a lot of things from, from a film photo. So there's built in kind of film grain um, that you can see on some of the photos. That's very desaturated. So it's not as punchy. Uh, the colors are a lot more muted. The colors aren't as vibrant and saturated. Um, and it just looks a lot more, more serious. So I don't think it's fit for all types of images that you're generating, 
But if you are looking for gritty or grimy or those types of, or some kind of vintage look that you're looking for, those all seem to generate pretty well on Flux Crea. But if you want something that's bright and colorful and vivid, um, it's very difficult to generate. I think by default, it just does not want to output images like that. And we'll see some now when I get into the comparisons and some other shots. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the comparisons against Flux Dev and some of the Korea creations just on their own as well. So a few from the opening intro. This one here is just a barista handing over coffee and she's supposed to have arm tattoos and a nose ring. So here on the left, we have the Flex Dev generation. I think it's pretty obvious when you put them side by side, which is which. This one's very Flex face, very shiny, just the typical what you would associate with Flex. And then over here, it's a very different, very different output from Korea. The facial variety from Korea is a lot bigger than Flex. And then the clothes and everything just look a bit more natural, so it's not as crisp. But then the big thing that you see compared to the two of them is one is just more colorful. So Flux Dev is just more colorful. There's some green in here from the background, her shirt, everything like that. But in Korea, it's very desaturated, almost like a vintage filter. Uh, a lot of browns. Brown is like the overall kind of strong color that comes across in all the generations and just very muted in general. Then the next one supposed to have a little bit of color. Uh, Korea is actually on the left this time and Dev is on the right. So here is just a pink haired samurai woman wearing armor over a red kimono and she's standing under falling cherry blossoms and a tori gate in the back. So they both produce the same very similar image in composition. Um, but again, Korea just has slightly more realistic kind of skin detailing and textures, uh, clothes detailing and textures as well on the armor, etc. Uh, whereas her face is just a little bit more fake in what you would associate with AI nowadays. The next one is also quite a big difference. Uh, this one was uh, a festival goer at a Burning Man-like festival. Uh, so there was a couple of harder things that I was trying to prompt for in the back here. There is supposed to be a dragon statue that's breathing fire. There's supposed to be uh, a cathedral that's lit up with LEDs uh, made out of bones and then a floating prism structure also in the background as well. So, so they both do some things right and some things a little bit off. Um, but overall, I think Kriya is better at prompt adherence most of the time from, from what I was finding as well. So the dragon looks better, obviously, on the Kriya gen than the dev gen. The LED cathedral is a little bit better on the dev gen. Um, I don't know why this one is floating and doesn't really look like a cathedral in this generation. Um, but it does have the prism statue, whereas this one is not there at all. And then the, the picture stylization is really just up to your preference. Uh, if you like it more colorful and vivid, then Dev is definitely doing that. But Korea is just, even with colorful LEDs and stuff, it's just not very colorful at all. But for a photo like this in the desert, um, you know, it, it works okay. Another one with more kind of fantastical uh, imagery. These are all supposed to be photorealistic. So the winner by far is obviously the Korea generation instead of the Flux Dev. This one came out as more of an illustration, even though the prompt said photorealistic. Um, the Korea gen is actually really good. I like this one. Um, the rocks are very detailed. The trees are quite detailed. This one has a splash of color. It's not just all kind of brown, um, but it is obviously a little bit more muted compared to the vivid green on the Flux Dev side. But really, it can also handle like imaginative stuff pretty well. Here's another one that Dev just did not try to generate realistically. Again, this is for a more realistic photo. It's just a unicorn kind of standing in the middle of a city street that's been abandoned with some of the nature just kind of growing out again. So here, Dev is very fake looking. It's almost like an illustration, whereas Kriya did make it a little bit more realistic. The buildings are definitely more realistic. Um, there's a lot more damage um, on the buildings itself, and the, the unicorn itself looks more realistic with the with the textures that it, it put on. So again, for scenes like this where there's destruction or, uh, you know, dystopian type of feel, the Korea output with the colors that it has fits it a little bit better. A few standalone generations. This one was supposed to be a female Jedi just standing on a, a rocky coast. This generation looks pretty good. Like the face is pretty natural. Um, it doesn't look like flux. And the way the... And the way the background is rendered and and the ocean and things, it looks quite realistic, almost like a real analog photo from film. Uh, there's a lot of film grain that they've added, so you can clearly see that in this picture. The only thing holding it back is, again, it's just that there's this 
brown filter or texture that's across the whole image. I'm sure you can fix this in post it just like any other photograph. If you want to white balance it or crank up the saturation a little bit, but in general, it just seems to do that all the time. But as someone that likes analog photography, I really like this image. Here's another one from one of my generations that I found Creo to be pretty good at. So a pretty dynamic scene, chariot race in a Roman Colosseum with some of the, the Roman soldiers uh, riding on the chariots. This one I've tried in a couple of different models and it hasn't come out. Uh, it hasn't come out good all the time. But the Creo one is actually surprisingly well done. Like the the motion blur, the horses. Um, this one has no rider for some reason, but the other two um, are all pretty good. Like the the way their armor is, uh, the way they're riding, everything seems pretty coherent. Uh, nothing super glaring that looks wrong. And then even the the background of the Colosseum. Um, it's well weathered, you know, it, it looks pretty good. It looks almost like a scene from a movie and a couple to end it off to try and get Korea to just generate more colors. So this one is supposed to be a colorful image. It's a lady at a fruit stand. So she's selling fruit. There's mangoes and some other fruits behind her, um, colorful scarves and her colorful shawl and, and clothing. Um, so it generates all that. And you also get a variety on the, on the face, but the colors just don't pop. It's just very muted. But the generation itself is quite good with the details in the crates and, and all the fruit and things like that. So it looks like a, a realistic scene. It's just not very colorful. And then lastly, from the thumbnail, uh, it's just a woman eating ice cream outside a very colorful ice cream shop. Um, and this one, again, the ice cream shop, you can tell it's supposed to be quite colorful. But really, it's, it looks like it just has another analog filter put on top of it. The details itself are quite good, like the, the glasses, the sunglasses, the ice cream, the cone. There's even extra fine hairs that is generated as well. Um, so this is all makes it more realistic. Until you look at the fingers, which uh, is the same problem with Flux. If you look closely, you'll notice she has six fingers. Um, so it still tends to mess up those kind of things. Maybe in the next model, it'll get a little bit better. So that was a quick rundown of Flux Kriya. Hopefully that was uh, useful for you to see what, what kind of outputs that you can expect from Kriya and if it's worth you know, changing your workflow to, to use Kriya instead of Flux Dev or not. Let me know if you prefer Dev or Flux Kriya or even I guess some people have switched to WAN 2.2 for image generation. Let me know which one you prefer the best. If you like the video, give it a like. And if you want to see more, just uh, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.